I want to discuss one of the events today. Uh, specifically, it's an event that was part of the uh, ML Systems talk at Stanford. And he was talking about shadow mode and how shadow mode can be used for uh, different types of uh, problems. In, in the case, uh, in this particular presentation by an engineer from Ambient AI, uh, they were talking about event detection. So what that means is uh, you have, a, let's say in this case, Ambient is a company that is uh, literally trying to do that, uh, detect events. So events, uh, let's say you have a camera that wants to detect when a certain car was parked at a parking lot, when a certain person uh, entered the airport, uh, those sort of things. Now, uh, just as a caveat, of course, there's a massive civil rights discussion to be had here, but let's put that aside for now. Let's just talk about technology and applications. So uh, what shadow modes allow to do is A-B testing at scale in parallel. Uh, and uh, this is what I want to talk about today. This is very close to what Tesla has been doing for years, which is using shadow mode for uh, data collection. And you could also potentially use shadow mode for model testing. And I'm going to talk about all of these things. This is the Not Even Wrong podcast. It's March 6, 2024. This is Delco For the data fund is down 85 basis points. The market is up 50 basis points. For the year, we are down 16.9%. The market is up 6.3%. We're underperforming by 23.2%. Uh, today, again, we had a, a, a very weak uh, performance by Tesla. Uh, it's down 2% while the market is up. So, of course, this is uh, in, in, uh, certainly not desirable. It has nothing to do with the beta or anything like that. This is pure alpha. Uh, Tesla is selling off because the Q1 numbers are coming in the estimates and they are not very good. There are demand problems in China, there are demand problems in Europe, and probably even here in the US. So we expect uh, a, a pretty weak Q1. Uh, the street is coming down with estimates. Uh, I think we are at this point looking mainly at volume uh, slowdown, not so much pricing, but of course people are uh, afraid of price decreases, margin pressure all these kinds of things, uh, there is definitely weakness in demand. And we've been talking about this today. It's hard to dissect why there are weakness in demand, uh, in particular, uh, given the performance of the cost, given the performance of, of, of the, you know, let's say Highland Model 3. Uh, those are great costs and uh, it's difficult to dissect why this is happening, uh, whether it's structural, whether it's uh, one-off, whether this is long-term problems or, or just a short-term problem. All of these questions are out in the open. I think the market is pricing what it's pricing. Uh, if we look at uh, you know three dollars a share, uh, we can certainly get to maybe 140, 150 uh, in terms of pricing. So between you know 40 and 50 times trough earnings when assuming this is even a trough of course, but we should assume that this is a trough, given that cyber trough is going to ramp, given that we have uh, you know, more software revenue coming, given that we have pricing stabilization, gross margin uh, increase. Uh, there should be potential for better earnings going forward. Nevertheless, I think we're in a tough situation. I think the problem that we have at Orange Capital Partners is, is not necessarily Tesla. I think it's okay to have a Tesla position the same way it's okay for other people that have positions in NVIDIA or ASML or, uh, or Bitcoin. Uh, that's not, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that's a headache per se. However, where I see the problem, of course, is the sizing. We have too much of Tesla right now, and we might have to reduce that. We might have to take a tax hit for that. Those are the kinds of things we are discussing. This podcast series is meant to give people a sense what it feels like to run a hedge fund. So, Certainly, those are things you have to think about. Uh, they're not easy decisions because it's one of those things that you do one thing and you're going to hurt yourself here, you're going to hurt yourself there. And all these decisions are made under uncertainty. So you have to have a good sense for what you're actually trying to achieve, what your goals are. And very often in this business, the goal is to have a bit of sanity, a bit of peace of mind. 
and that might sound a bit esoteric, but this is uh, when it comes to situations like this, when you really don't know anymore what's what's going on. You you have a phenomenal product with with a fantastic price, and and it's not selling, then then you just don't understand why. Uh, it's, it's it's a headache. It's 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 just difficult to uh, you know. Th there's no competition, no competing product. Uh, there is certainly demand for transportation, demand for you know products that please the customer. Uh, all these things are they're just, they're they're still here. I mean they they, just, they don't just go away. And nevertheless, we have this demand issue now right now, and it's across the globe. It's not it's not just here or in in I don't know Germany or it's it's across the globe. But in growth, there's still growth, but it's not the kind of growth that we're used to. And again, I think the the, the main headache or the question mark is really, look, we have a phenomenal product with, with a phenomenal price. People are supposed to be buying this. This is how it usually works. Now, we believe this was, this is going to turn out to be the same case here. Right now, we're just in a pocket where we're a little bit, uh, you know, we lack the, the, the orientation that we're used to by Tesla. But let's talk about the event today. So uh, th there's been a couple of events. Uh, I'm going to summarize them by the end of the week. But this one I want to talk about today because it, it's it's kind of close to home in terms of uh, technology, in terms of uh, business uh, processes, in terms of approaches. Uh, this is a company, or uh, Amb Ambient AI. They gave a presentation today here at Stanford and uh, uh, ML Systems Workshop, and they were talking about shadow modes. And I thought it was pretty interesting. Now, in their case, it's shadow modes for A/B testing for event testing. So what that means is, let's say you have a you, uh, your business is to install a camera that detects whenever uh, a person enters a room. That's your that's your use case. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to have better uh, better uh, event detection, right? So you, let's say you have model A, which which is doing event detection, and it has maybe an accuracy of 95 percent. Now you want to improve that, and uh, the the problem is okay. How do you how do you actually do that? How do you test your new model versus the old model and there's a couple of things you can do one is you can do offline testing uh, uh, you can do online testing uh, and uh, both of these have pros and cons offline testing is uh, it's not risky because you're offline you're not affecting customers uh, the downside is of course you're offline that means you're not in, in the real world you're uh, using maybe old data uh, this is reminiscent of Doing, let's say, when you had when I had a model um, in on Wall Street to trade options, then I would do sort of uh, I think it was called backward testing. I would just use the data from the last three years and then pretend that I was trading uh, this type of model and see what kind of money I would have made. But this is all kind of in retrospective. It's offline. It doesn't uh, capture unforeseen out of distribution events, things like that. So if you want to do online testing, on the other hand. Of course, you're running a risk, particularly when you have a customer-facing product, that if your model is not very good, you're going to piss off people. Like one of the examples with Tesla is the, the windshield wipers. They're, they're still not working very well. And uh, you could potentially improve them by having different models used in shadow mode and deployed and then learn from them. But let's get back to the presentation here. And uh, uh, so Ambient AI is using shadow mode for event detection. Uh, so they have model A, which captures a certain, let's say the, the goal is to capture uh, certain types of people, let's say, you know, people that are suspicious that enter the airport. And you have model A, which does that. And now you want to launch model B, model C. You can have several models in parallel. And the question is, can you, how do you do that? Do you, do you run that in, in, uh, do you run that in shadow mode? Do you do it offline, online? And the answer to that is you could do it in shadow mode while you're running model A. You can do the other models in shadow mode, collect the data, see the discrepancies. Another application, which, uh, and, and this is the main reason why I got so excited, of course, is also the Tesla approach of shadow mode, which is for data collection. So there we have the problem of um, self driving. And what Tesla was trying to do is collect data uh, from situations, so-called edge cases. And what, what you can do is you can have the person drive, and let's say I drive, and uh, 
uh, inference machine, inference computer on, the, on my car is shadow driving. So it's pretending to drive. It's not actually driving, but it's doing all the things that it would be doing if it was driving. And whenever it is in sync with me, that is fine, that is sort of data that is not interesting. So whenever it does things that it would, that, that I would also, that it, whenever it does things that I'm doing anyway, uh, it would be fine. But whenever there's a discrepancy, that will be an edge case. So if I turn left, while it predicted maybe not to turn left, then that would be uploaded to the headquarters, that would be considered an edge case, and it would be used for learning. Now another application which is, I think, even more interesting is you could do model testing, right? So you could have, again, let's say you have V12, which is now driving, full self-drive, driving around, and you could have V12 1.1, V12 1.12, V12 1.13. So you have all these different versions of V12 that you don't want to you, you don't want to fire up live because you don't know, maybe there's some serious bugs in there. So what you're doing is you're running them in parallel, and then you're, again, you're looking at discrepancies, you're looking at where, where it's different, uh, and hopefully it can improve. You, you have to, of course, define benchmarks and how to actually even measure whether these models are better. But those are the kinds of things that I think shadow mode allows, and I think this presentation was really interesting. Uh, the gentleman was also talking about uh, you know, the cost, of course, to the trade-offs. Let's say if you want to run this model testing in parallel, that's pretty expensive, but it, it could still turn out to be less expensive than, you know, uh, some other stuff, let's say A-B testing or or online testing, which is a, a lot more risky. Like you have these fiascos that like Facebook used to be famous and sometimes even Tesla, where they launch something and it doesn't work and then there's a PR, or you know, take take uh, take the Gemini thing with Google. If they had done shadow mode for a while, uh, well, that's kind of hard to do there actually. But you know, <clears throat> again, launching models live into an existing customer base is risky. I guess that's my point. And you could, uh, in the case of full self drive, you could use uh, potentially you could use shadow mode for um, for better you know, for model training. So to summarize, ML Systems uh, Workshop, all, always interesting. This time it's about shadow mode. Uh, the person that was presenting from Ambient AI was talking about event detection. Uh, and we think that that is a really interesting application for shadow mode. And it's also related to what Tesla is doing in terms of data collection. And it also could be used for model training. Thank you.